As we speak, Secretary of State Blinken uh, is on his fifth trip uh, to the Middle East uh, to discuss the situation in Gaza and regional uh, stability. Will the fifth trip be a charm? Will it be more productive than his previous uh, four trips to the region? Uh, he declared before he left that his strategic objective essentially is to wind down the war in Gaza and negotiate a wider peace. The biggest impediment that I see uh, for this trip is one, trying to cash in the Gaza war. Uh, this is not uh, as easy as the October 73 or the Gulf War or the 87 Intifada, where you can automatically follow it with a peace process. History doesn't repeat itself in this sense. Two, uh, the agenda that the secretary carries with him is an obsolete agenda. It's talking about the two-state solution. Can the two-state solution be resuscitated? And on what terms? What is that statehood it's talking about? Third, the extreme rejectionist government in Israel. The administration here in Washington has never uh, faced uh, a government in Israel that obstinate and that's uh, refusing uh, to uh, cooperate with the administration with regards to its vision uh, in the Middle East. The Biden administration seems also to be adamant, totally fixated uh, on Arab official policies, dealing with Arab leaders, and somehow ignoring uh, purposely uh, Arab public opinion as if it doesn't have any direct impact on, on the U.S. plans, which it does, uh, particularly when you talk about enduring peace uh, in, the, in the region. As a matter of fact, according to the latest survey conducted in 16 Arab countries by Arab Opinion Index at Arab Center, uh, Washington, D.C., 73% of Arabs today are certain or do entertain serious doubts about the possibility for peace with Israel after the Gaza war. As a matter of fact, only 13%, a meager 13%, believe that there is still a possibility for peace.